Let's talk about this male pill then. The prospect of that uh, is a step closer. It would let men enjoy a full sex life with no chance of getting a woman pregnant. Scientists in Australia have found a reversible way to stop sperm getting out without affecting sexual function. We can speak to Charles Kingsland, uh, who's um, from the Hewitt Facility Fertility Centre at Liverpool Women's Hospital. Hello to you, Charles. Hi, Simon. How are you? Very well. Also, Mike Buchanan on the other line, who's formed a new party called Justice for Men and Boys and the Women Who Love Them. Hello, Mike. Hello, Simon. Charles, first of all, Professor Charles Kingsland, how does this work? <clears throat> well, the, the, I mean, it's the, it's the holy grail, isn't it, the male contraceptive pill. Um, the previous previous um, attempts at, at producing um, uh, a male contraceptive have worked on the basis of reducing male hormones, which, of course, uh, reduce the sperm count, but it but gives intolerable side effects, or, in fact, killing the sperm in the male's body before they're actually ejaculated. And they've met with varying degrees of of success or lack of success. This new one actually acts on the muscles that 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 put the the little sperm into the semen before it's ejaculated out. So by altering the muscle um, activity, it prevents the sperm from getting out without detracting from the from the from the sexual experience, so to speak. Okay. So that's, um... that's how that's how it how it's proposed to work. Do you not get a, a backup there, a build up? Well, um, <laughs> it's just a bit like having a vasectomy. All right. in, 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 in theory, you do, but what happens is the sperm actually um, eventually degenerate and, and just um, sort of dissolve. But it, takes, it can take a bit of time, so there's no, there's no chance of a backup now. OK, and, um, you know, I guess with any new drug like this, there's a bit of trepidation about testing it. You know, uh, who's going to be the first guys to try this out, do you think? Well, that's the point. You see that what the the, the researchers have developed um, in a mouse the ability to reduce this muscular activity. Now they can do it in a mouse, but they haven't found a, a drug that could pr- pr- produce the same sort of 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 effects in a human. There's one or two drugs that do have this effect, but before you can actually try it out on a male, a human male, you've got to find a drug that 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 actually produces this response. Yeah. So. In effect, it's a great idea, but then you've got to develop the drug. It's got to go through all the early development phases, which can take up to 10 years. And then it's got to be free of side effects, it's got to be effective, and it's got to be relatively cheap to use. So in, in reality, we're, a long, long, we're still a long, long way away from producing that, um, that all-elusive male conceptive pill, although the early stages, the early research in the mice have shown it to be very promising. Let's just bring in Mike Buchanan there, um, who campaigns for, well, he's formed a new party designed to promote a male agenda or, or put male, men on an equal footing with women as he sees it. And Mike, what have you made of some of the uh, media around this and some of the reporting, which is all focused on whether you could trust a guy to take this pill or not? Yes, well, I mean, I should perhaps start off, Simon, by saying that uh, I think the male pill is potentially... A fantastic thing for men. It, it, it at last brings the possibility of some some um, some reproductive rights to men, and that's that's long overdue. Now, uh, um, of course, men would take the pill if only because if they fail to do so for any reason, including forgetfulness, they could be paying the consequences for 18 years or more if their partners became pregnant and decided to have the children. Um, uh, and um, up to now, all the rights when it comes to reproductive issues have belonged to women. Men have had no rights in this area, and whatever responsibilities women choose to land on them. Hmm. Um, I mean, it is strange, isn't it, how the female contraceptive pill was viewed as a great liberator of women, and yet this one's been turned into a kind of anti-male argument, really. Well, indeed, indeed. And, and, and we know that um, it's very common for women to uh, to cause contraceptive methods, including the pill, to, to, to fail. So they'll tell their partners that they're on the pill, but, but you know... But I mean, they might they might take it in the mouth and swallow, you know, and, and uh, spit it out or something. So now, wh- wh- while the male pill could, in theory, stop two two forms of paternity fraud, such as that, where women deceive men and become pregnant, in theory, it probably won't, especially if men keep the pills in the home. Okay, but, uh, don't, but don't, I, don't you think the consequences? I'll, 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 I'll try and explain why just briefly. Okay. Um, a, a, um, a market will develop for pills which look identical but which have no contraceptive effect. Now, some women will substitute the real pills with these bogus pills, given the chance. And for anyone who doubts that women could be so devious in their bids to become pregnant by men who don't want to become fathers, we, we, we recently did a piece um, about positive paternity test strips being sold on eBay. 
And the buyers were women who wanted their partners to believe they were pregnant with a view either to getting married um, or to stop using contraception and, they're becoming, and thereby becoming pregnant naturally. OK, uh, well, I can't vouch for that. I mean, that's a, quite a dim view of, of women that you've got there. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid uh, you know, men are just very gullible in this area and they, they, they really are far too trusting. And, and the reality is, you know, women, especially when, you know, if the biological clock is ticking, um, you know, have, have no compunction about, uh, about deceiving their partners and becoming pregnant. And, uh, of course, you know, the men have got no choice but then but, but to have, have a responsibility. And it's also estimated that between, well, 10, between 10 and 30 percent of British children are being supported financially and otherwise by men who've been misled into believing they're the children's biological fathers. Yeah, there's enough that, guys. There's enough guys who don't want to know about the their new ch- ch- children as well, isn't there? Who do a runner and, uh, yes, and don't support well, yes, them but, either. Yes, yeah, but yeah, but the state chases them and it forces them to pay if it can. Uh, you know, this this is it's, it's always the state always assaults men. Um, um, you know, to advantage women and never vice versa. OK, Mike, good to hear from you. That's Mike Buchanan, who's uh, formed a new party called Justice for Men and Boys, and also Charles Kingsland, Professor Charles Kingsland, I should say, from the Hewitt Fertility Centre at Liverpool Women's Hospital. <laughs>